All right, so my, my other video ended a little bit uh, suddenly. Uh, it's probably better for the best anyway, so we can do the BIOS in its own little video. This is the main BIOS screen, and we actually have a ton of all of the, I mean, like, it almost seems like every option is available to us within the BIOS, which is super nice. My little tiny tripod. Serial point. Serial point. It's going to be an uh, interesting CPU configuration. I think that we're going to get a lot of mileage out of a few of these options. You can see Intel virtualization, so those extensions will be available to like VirtualBox and VMware Workstation. Um, when you do hold this, uh, the GPD win needs to be held like horizontally when you're going through these BIOS options. Additionally, the... Let me focus. Focus. Thank you. Additionally, the options... Um, yeah, the right trigger acts as a back button, almost if it was on Android, um, and it's being held in a portrait state right now. Thermal, thermal configuration. So, dynamic platform and thermal framework. I wonder if we were to turn this off, where it would like stop throttling altogether. But in any event, um, the thermal throttling is like. So Super high as it is anyway. It's like extremely hot. Uh, so after doing my heatsink mod and stuff, we might be in a better place. Skin hotspot proxy sensor. A lot of these options are new to me, so we're gonna have to uh, get to look them up. Intel ambient temperature participant. Allow high performance is disabled. <laughs> All right, so I guess all I have to do is just allow high performance. Current logical processor disabled. Controls LPD control performance used only by passive policy. This option turns high performance mode on off when on cooling mode policy won't take effect. Start P state P zero. That's fine. Super debug. Let's let's take a look at what happens when we uh, enable super debug. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm not gonna save any of these changes anyway. But I don't want super debug on. I don't know what it does. It already looks like we have every option available to us anyway. Thermal failsafe settings, battery, battery, plus hot, thermal throttling, disabled. What is that? Stop clock throttling, TIA2 adaptive throttling, thermal throttling. Thermal throttling mechanisms are implemented to try to reduce temperature by reducing power consumption in response to a hot condition or skin temperature violation. Curious. Uh, it seems like it's disabled. Whoa! My phone almost just took a bad spill. Android. Um. Cool. I don't know what that all does. Back button actually worked for me. That go around. Above 4G decoding. Yeah, it's not necessary. USB configuration. Holding it like this is super weird. Uh, and off mass storage drive. Um, okay, well that's that. Platform trust technology. It's fine. Security configuration. Apologize for like the lights or the in ideal way that this is being recorded. Uh, BCM, what is this? Son of a. Oh, you bastard! Uh, yeah, so that right back button is, uh, is a pain in the ass. That's a. Uh, <laughs> I accidentally hit enter, but right after it hit the, the back button, which was the quit without saving, 
Uh, so it was just the worst timing. Um, additionally, if you keep the power plugged in while you try to go into the BIOS settings, it will not go. Instead, it will uh, just show you this little battery charging screen from uh, an OS independent layer system component. Trying to make power and performance. Uh, I guess if all right, I'm, again, I'm gonna leave everything at a default setting so I can make like baseline tests, and then I, I would rather have that set to performance. Um, Double cell clock, GPS. That's curious. Fifty minute workaround. OS image eight point one and Android. Now that's curious. So are we able to go to Android by just switching this option? Curiouser and curiouser. VSS storage. This is charging persistent RAM size. Specify the main memory reserved for PRAM. Relocated right after MRC. I don't really care about that. I'll find crash dump. Okay. That Android thing was interesting though. Intel GOP driver will unload VBIOS, disable will load VBIOS. Alright. Integrated graphics driver, yes. Definitely leave this enabled. If you disable it, you'll no longer have a screen. Uh, which has been shown many times to be bad when you disable it. Graphics boost disabled. I'm pretty sure I'm going to want that enabled later on. Uh, okay, so this is where you can specify uh, having a, a larger uh, base video memory size. So at the get-go, if you make this, it'll be 512 megs at all times. So system RAM available will only be 3.5 gigs, and then it will dynamically um, go all the way up to uh, 1.7 gigs as it's needed. Aperture size, GTT size. Oh, I'm pressing the back button again. Curses, that back button. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. GTT size, max is eight megabytes, so we'll leave it at that. IGD thermal, integrated graphics, Display thermal. Yeah, let's keep that disabled. Spread spectrum panel configuration. MIPI panel vendor. LG MIPI. Uh, okay, so I guess it's an LG uh, panel with the MIPI interface. ISP. I don't know what ISP stands for. Uh, maybe it's uh, probably for like a camera, like an image signal processor. LCD control, force lids that is on, BIA, GMCH use VBIOS default, leave an ALS support, IGD flat panel, MIPI DSI, enabled, disabled. Now that's curious. So it's just straight MIPI and not MIPI DSI? Is that right? Why did that arrow come up? Uh, panel scaling auto. Alright. Um, display from Type C. So I do have a USB C to display port over Type C. Uh, we can enable that. Type C lane allocation. Two lanes, four lanes. I'm not going to save this just yet, but we'll be able to do that later. But I do have a um, USB C to display port cable and I do have a 4k monitor memory configuration options the time is almost 10 minutes so it's gonna be booting off soon but man oh man is there a lot of options Southbridge gah it shut off on me again all right I'll make a part two to this bios video